Do you want me to go go into the Zoom, or did you already? No, we're people? good. We're we're all good. So we're right here. It starts right here, and I am recording. Okay, John, what's up? Hey, so yeah, last last week <laughs> we didn't get so much so much done as we thought. Now what I ended up doing is uh, rolling along on a critical path, and that is this week I spent on putting myself and Katarina. We did a lot of work on a. Uh, a submission of the CAD package to the inspectors, and not not to the inspector, to the structural engineer. So that part's going forward. Uh, basically, we we're ha we basically handed over everything we got. I mean, did a lot of work in updating some detail, like uh, completely new carport design uh, to facilitate ease of build, and also uh, I do have good hope on um, uh, the other aspect of the. Code compliance, which is uh, working with IBTS.org, uh, they're very positive. So they're they're just um, uh, hey hey join us. Okay, so yeah, join us now. They're meeting. That's that's where we are. So we're spent. yes, somebody join us now. So so on the code compliance part, we're. Um, with IBTS.org, I mean, ideally they, they contract out with people like KC and, and St. Joe, uh, and they can function as our full-fledged uh, facilitator for the, the code inspection for, the, for that. Now, we do know that KC doesn't allow it, right? Um, unless you have a special relationship with KC. So that's, that's the idea there. And We'll see if we can make it happen, and, and they're looking at okay. Well, let's see if we can do that for every community. So that was our mm -hmm. last discussion. And also, I, I passed on some uh, the PV system design. I, I did talk to Mark, who uh, basically looked over the the plumbing, some of the electrical. Uh, they pulled in another guy to look over some of the PV off grid PV system because ours is quite non standard. I would say it's uh, as normal for. You know, uh, I can actually uh, describe that because it's an interesting design, but it's definitely not standard. Um, so did um, update on a CAD for how you actually do the PV mounting on the roof. It's pretty much building integrated. It's not necessarily building integrated, but it's designed to be easy to build. So li not like anyone else who just throws on a bunch of panels at the end where that's pretty hard because you got to worry about what's below, like making the roof not leak and stuff like that. But here we're designing it from the ground up, so it's, it's good. It's awesome. Uh, beyond that, <clears throat> that's all our answer. So next steps are <clears throat> probably, uh, it's going to take like a month for the, the plan check documents to arrive because land is required. So next step is uh, I got to get serious about looking for a couple of parcels. So that's the next step because they can't uh, put the final stamp on those um, build blueprints unless there's a site attached to that. So that's that's the that's the thing. Sorry, can, can you? It, how does that make any sense? Like, what what does that have to do with the structural? Because it's the engineer who is looking at the plans, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so so the idea there was was to pr produce a package for the building department. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, we could we could get like oh, just the structural engineering done, but that doesn't help us. Okay. So you, so you got it. Okay. So, you, to, so we're doing two steps. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Two gotcha, steps gotcha. in one uh, to streamline that whole process. Um, that's that's what's happening. Um, that's where we're at. Land. Magical land is next, and other than that, I mean, it spent a lot of time documenting further. Uh, on all the details so just like I think we could just nail the the structural the interior finishing plumbing electrical man it's it's looking really good it's it does look good and then also you know we do have an entire kit of a house from last summer where we built and disassembled a, a whole house now it it's a stack oh, let's go to some some photos uh, let me share um, <laughs> What is what is a house that's actually in kid form look like? You can actually ask that question. And 
I'll share my screen. Where Where are you going with this? Two bills. Are you, are, Two are, bills. Are, you ta are you bringing up the the existing panels as an example of like what's possible, or are you saying are you suggesting that these should be used for the first build? Oh, actually, when I looked at them, they're right. That we basically have half the house built, and that's those panels. So there's a good case for using them. Uh, we were saving them for uh, <clears throat> for what? For workshops when we do two two week builder crash courses here. Yeah. Now right. so we don't have a workshop like that planned, and that's worth like thirty thousand dollars in materials. Oh, might as well use that to ease the budget a little bit since we ain't got any money. <laughs> I'm working so on it. Help. I'm working on it. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, photo. Are you in charge of uh, the funds, Jonathan? I wouldn't say I'm in charge. Uh, <laughs> I am. Uh, I don't know how much you've been following, but there's this no, thing called the. Much. Yeah. There's this thing called the Emerging Ventures Grant, and we've played around with submitting for a long, long time, and I'm pretty committed to just pulling the trigger and, and seeing if we can get it, because yeah. at, at this, you know, there's there's no risk, and uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the funding, yeah, no, that's an issue, but uh, we've got money left enough to, to build one house. We don't have enough for two houses, but... Uh, so I was talking to uh, getting loans. I mean, that's that's kind of the thing. There's some Bitcoin I've got. There's loans could do, but revenue. That, that's what I'm trying to build because you build something, you produce something, and there's revenue. So this is a pile. It's actually 16 by about eight feet. Uh, that's 16 by eight feet. You could fit that on a trailer, but that's effectively all the panels from uh, the house from last year, and they're all in good shape. So. Um, so that's where we are. So let's actually get get into the yeah get into just so, so the main focus is right now in terms of the next next step is definitely looking at October and the bills. So uh, I mean number one thing is just making sure all the instructionals are are there. I mean for me it's a big deal because because going through the the complete finishing is is a big deal like. Uh, when we did the CD Cajon, we did pretty much the structure, not the interior. We know how painful it is to kind of like inch by inch put in all the utilities. And for that reason, we said, okay, we'll design it right into the very process so we can be super efficient at it. And right hey, now... Can you just give a quick update on... So like last week, you you your goal was to put in the plumbing and the electrical. Yeah. And the, and the idea was to do one day each. Obviously... You know, shit happens. So, like, what? Where are we with that right now? Where are we with that? Is is detailed procedures. So it's still that. Like, I think I can do. When it comes to the plumbing, I think I can nail that in a day. So I'm gonna go out there and do that in a day. Right now, I actually got to do some of the framing for the bathroom and and what's remaining. The, the second story bathroom we added that, so we gotta frame that up. There's uh, the double wall, like the utility wall that we have. Okay. Uh, gotta frame it up. But yeah, I mean, uh, so next, like as far as the practical build milestone, okay, here's a day and we're actually, myself, one person, a day, cut up all the, all the PVC. The design is, is good in the sense that, uh, let me uh, share, share the screen again. So, some so, of the, so like just thinking in terms of operational timeline, all, yeah. all you're saying is that the plan hasn't changed, we're just delayed. Like, just a, a couple yeah, weeks lost, lost later. Lost a week. Yeah. Lost a week. Yeah. Now moved, moved right on to the getting the um, getting the code package for the the building package for the building departments. But here, um, if we look at well, let's see. Let's let's ah, oh, let's let's just review the cat cat a little bit. This, so this is uh, Logan. Everybody else. Uh, that's Katrina and I did like. Went two days like non-stop on this, but this is where we are, including the PV panels on top. So that's that's the beauty. That's actually five kilowatts. Um, mounting system is, is 
man, it's the coolest thing if you ever built anything like this because uh, so PV panels are mounting. So here's the house like it looked before. PV panels and mounting. What is it? It's a bunch of I want to explain this because this is reportedly most lean and efficient PV mounting integrated into a house. So two by six across the whole whole deal and all of them are like that. Those are all two by sixes. There's a ledger on the edge of the roof. There's a steel plate bonding that down and otherwise this is laying flat and then the panels they lay right on top. These are <clears throat> quarter by uh, actually eight eight by one eighth by three angle and there's a hole in it so you mount the panel on that and on the top it's like a quarter by two or quarter by three steel uh, very simple mounts like I just bend them out and, and those four mounting points and this is to be passed by the engineer it's a low angle about 10 degrees the engineer will tell us does this hold wind and water <laughs> small angle for water self-cleaning of panels if they're flat they're going to get dirty but lowest angle possible to keep the wind loads down but man uh it's these this all are you this long ledger and you've got all these um 16 footers across the roof and this is epdm roof with uh rigid insulation underneath but man i can't get any simpler than that it's like 200 bucks in lumber there's just these some of these metal things that that could be uh, probably eighth inch steel just angles like that just bent out that's got to be steel and strong uh, so that's that on the panels um so that's this minute, the, oh sorry go ahead Bob. yeah I'm just gonna ask um up here in michigan with snow loads when we get this built up here yeah. how is it uh, that should be the snow loading of those panels and from what I remember it's like super high it's like these panels are are I don't know I, I forget what they were but they're they're very strong so you're relying on uh, so, so what we have to have is those brackets in the back mm -hmm. uh, if you assume that the frame that the panels are structural like they're supposed to be because they, they're supposed to be mounted flat a lot of times I mean you, people do mount them flat when they say flat 10 degree angle so this is industry standard I think this should do now we can uh, find out from the engineer more about that I'm, I'm sure those panels are strong enough for here for Michigan I'm here what do you got like up to up to like three feet maybe of snow at a time three four mm -hmm. five six or maximums of yeah three would, three would be maximum here in the southern part of the state yeah yeah, but they should be. I, I don't see a problem with that, but we, we'd have to inquire further. What's the limit of this? Because I think flat panels like this, uh, because of their inherent strength, they're, they should be pretty good. And, and they're actually not, they're relying upon that 16-inch or that 16-foot um, uh, purlin or whatever. That's where uh, the load is carried, right? Yeah, and a roof is structural for what's what are we designing a roof for? Is it like, I forget, I think it's 30 pounds per square foot. Okay. So, so what is 30 pounds per square foot? I, I believe that translates to 30 feet of snow. I think it's like one foot per... <laughs> thir 30, no, 30, ah, I forget. But it was some ridiculous high number. Like 30 it's overbuilt. Feet, um, say again? Yeah. yeah it's I even overbuilt then. Yeah. If that doesn't work for you, what you have to do is instead of making point connections, you might have to do like a more solid connection... Uh, it's more like, mm -hmm. more like a whole riser, like a more solid than these point connections. But these are steel, like quarter inch steel. So, mm. uh, the, this okay. is super. I mean, you can, you'll be able to. If those panels are, I think they're uh, something like, I don't know, like twenty psf probably. Thirty. I, I don't know what it is, but if you sit on the middle of them, these, mm -hmm. these bars should that should hold you easily so, okay yeah we'll see what the engineer said so that's that there's that's the let's go through the whole model like so this this i could see like if, i want to build this out for the first first house now if so we're going to build it for customer x which means we don't know who the customer is so we can probably say hey i don't know this is solar ready 
we'll have to evaluate it carefully. Uh, I mean, the cost savings for installing a PV system are good, so we probably will do this as a stock option, not even, and not do this as a stock option. I would go with this as stock because of the lifetime savings we, we believe in lowering the cost of living and it does lower your cost cost of living because you could be saving up to two thousand it's between one thousand and two thousand dollars a year in electricity if you're using all the panels like if you make this a point to use it so that's where we are uh Wait, one quick question does does that orientation mean that you're when you're uh laying out the house on the plot of land you're limited in the actual house orientation? No. No. Uh, I looked at a few different ways to do this. Um, so we would orient it according to where we are for a particular lot. So the different... Uh, and this dock here, this is all on my log. You can, you can take a look at it. But you can do all these kinds of configurations. So I looked at all this. We're not going to use this kind of stuff here. But this is what we're doing. We're not even doing this. This is we're doing 16 panels because when you get that little angle, you're going to start getting shading if you got that little angle. So we can't pack it to 5.7. We're going to do 16 panels like of this nature here. Now you could do them the other way. And you can fit 16 panels, like two, four, six, eight. Yeah, you could do eight of these, like the other orientations, so you can actually be inclining them to the front of the house. So it doesn't matter. Like we'll, we'll adjust it however we need. And then we just have to modify a little bit on what we're doing. Like, in, well, these purlins or whatever you call them, these PD mounts, they'll be the same as here. But if we run it the other way, well. We might have to, because the panels are actually a little, I don't know, it might work exactly as it is with different mounts, or we might need to do more like run transverse supports. Here we don't have any transverse supports. All we have is these ones, these long ones across. So this should be good. Uh, updates. So if you've studied the previous, I uh, just to go through what we've got. If you studied the previous carport, look what we did here. We just use tall modules to do this instead of using posts and then adding a railing. And I can tell you the railing was, that was hard. Take a look at, <clears throat> well, I mean, if uh, the railing pictures, uh, we would go to, just to show you why, why we, change that canopy ah uh, it's not front door can why do we change it it's because the to get I'll explain it because to do the posts do we have a one for carport this was hard to get all these bases <laughs> man you gotta do this you gotta sledgehammer these in so do the module none of that put the sheeting on top and then put like interior sheeting on the inside so you get water running inside um, now how do you do this water runoff here because this is all going to be sheathed and then um, exterior set siding vinyl siding so here we have the water running off and here we put flashing and put a gutter on the inside hey gutter on the inside um how does that look the gutter's on the inside here you see that so that <laughs> well this is like interior slash exterior space it's a carport it's not it's technically exterior but that's the only way to get without penetrating this uh, without putting the gutter on the outside, you can put it inside. Uh, how do we do the po these posts? So now we're going to do this. These are 22 inch and 22 inch post holes. So that's concrete. How do you do it? 
Why with an open source 22 inch auger? So we'll use the live track and we'll take the live track out to the side. This is a chance where we can actually start, like, we gotta be integrating the equipment with us. So, so it's easy to make an auger. Like I could, I'm gonna build me an auger for, that's 22 inches and um, do these with live track. Uh, these are concrete filled. All the, the volume of these three actually ends up being about one cubic yard. So it's like $150 in materials, which is, man, that's as cheap as you can go to do that. Um, yeah, so, and stripping the house, taking off the PV panels, the carport, the top OSB, um, foundation, similar to before, it's all of that the same. Roof assembly. So <clears throat> these are not like like Logan, for example, like why are we doing type three files, type one, two, and three files? These are all modules. Now Katrina did them real quick. They're not separated into individual ones. But I discovered a thing where uh, here's a useful trick. Instead of like just trying to generate, I think there's a shortcut for generating the separated build material type files that have all the detail. This is one block, but how do you separate it? So actually I'll show you right now. Control C. Put it into a new document, and I think this works. So we put it into a new document, and in the part tree, it looks like one block. But man, I bet you there's parts in there. Are there? I don't know. It looks like there's parts in there, but you can't see them here. So let's try an export. So I'm going to select. Uh, I'm going to select that thing. I'm going to go to File, Export. I'm going to export it as Step. So module in step. Um, so I did that. It went on my my desktop. Now I'm gonna open it up. So module in step right here. What happened? Oh, look at that! It spit out all the individual parts. So now we've got all the individual parts. So we don't have to do that third step. I just discovered this. I didn't know about this. Uh, so now you've got all these individual parts separable within a part tree, which means that we can use this for purposes of build material generation. So Logan, that will simplify your work. We still need the, I still like the, the positionally correct start sketches. Why? Because if we got to modify this, we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to modify the sketches. But you can also do scripting and you can do like, like eventually what's going to happen is we're going to have a designer where you drag and drop parts and it'll generate like all the configurations, whatever window you got, it'll generate all this automatically because Python, uh, FreeCAD is Python scriptable. You know Python, you can generate anything like, uh, like a programmer. Uh, and this, this leads to what we can do right now to get to those kinds of workflows of Python. There's a spreadsheets workbench. And um, uh, so, so Logan, uh, can you present to us on what you know about this topic? Uh, I don't know too much about this topic at the at this point, but I'll uh. Look, to I'll explain I'll present. explain what you've done with the script, uh, so sure. we can actually whoever can look at your log, and me too. I want to learn what you have done because another guy already generated a little s script where he was actually generating all those wall modules automatically. He just put in like a few parameters, like it's that tall or whatever, and it would just spit it out automatically. He didn't have to do any of the CAD um, in a normal way. So right. let's see what uh, we can do. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So I did, uh, I installed CutterJS Workbench in FreeCAD 16. So once you get it installed, it's just SH2 panels. So <laughs> yeah. it's not much of a workbench, but um, say you have a new file, you come up here, there's no icons, but he has tool tips. So you can create an eight foot exterior, eight foot interior or nine foot exterior. So nine foot exterior, I uh, there's there's some issues. It's still using the old blocking. It's not using the two by four blocking, and uh, so um, that just spit it out automatically. Yeah, it spit it out automatically. And what consists of the script is um, just it's this it's pretty much this file. Um, so he's got three. Basically, he creates he defines his own function called makebox, um, which it's just based on um, adding an object calling it box, um, but he's adding a couple parameters for not only the length, width, and height, but also uh -huh. the uh, vector for the position, which is good, but um, I, I want to extend this by adding 
by completing the vector and adding the uh, yaw pitch and roll so that when you call this function and you um, say you're down here and you you're making your bottom plate you can make it in your zero 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 make it at the origin but then have another step here to move that box move that object along the vector and also rotate it so you basically make your bottom plate you move it and you rotate it into the final position in the total 3d cad um yeah here you know and then you step through each one of those and instead of having it be these icons i don't i don't know that it needs to be a workbench i was thinking that i could just run it as a macro um yeah and and that way you know it's a little bit more tedious but i think it's fine that way when you um I don't think I have my example, my other example open anymore. But when you run it at the beginning of the the script, you just you put in your uh, your vector of where you want it to be, and that way you, you you update just that one item, and then you run your script. And maybe it's it's probably a bit clunky to have it have different segments because you know there's there's corner corner modules and then there's um, yeah. Like window modules, door modules, maybe you just have a chunk, or maybe you just have a different script for each one of those. That would be fine too. And then you just tell it where it needs to be, and, and you can go into your model and and find a point, you know, find this point, and, you know, it can be the um, in the corner of an existing module, you find the, the bottom left point, for example, and you put that in as your starting origin point for when you build your adjacent module yeah so that's the vision the only problem is i'm uh i'm not a proficient coder and uh go back to uh, the script for a sec so like the distinction between like what you're defining and what's already available in free so for example like bo this box placement freecad dot placement that's a command that's already programmed and that's already from freecad uh yeah yeah, yeah so FreeCAD and all of that stuff is defined in FreeCAD. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing that's not defined in his stuff is the rotation vector. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. So you can basically like yeah. have this text file, and even if you take like you see this make box thing, well, yeah, if you just run that as a script, well, that's again just start changing those numbers and like manually, literally start producing like all kinds of modules you want, right? Right. Right. Um, yeah, and it's yeah. it's up to the box. So I guess with your file type one, was the goal to have all of the dimensions in the document. You open just that file type one, and you've got, you know, um, for example, and some of the stuff that I still need to update. All module file type one. So um, this is I still need to stagger the USB, yeah. but you know, I can drill. Uh, I'm in the wrong. There you go. So I can drill into each one of these, the framings, and I have all of the dimensions. Is that what you wanted for file type one? Uh, yeah, I mean, the idea there was, indeed, because like, say we've got some modification, like, like literally, there's some oddball module. Yeah, you want to be able to do it easily within this, like modifying it here, which like anybody in FreeCAD could do. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that is useful because there's always going to be like some tweak that somebody wants to make and we want to make that as easy as possible so i guess so for right now that's quite relevant now what happens in the future when we have this full workbench that allows you to make custom modules um it'll be it'll be that you can design all through the interface and, and it should be like as user friendly as possible um, so at the end of the day, we're trying to go for as user friendly a way as possible. And is FreeCAD the tool to do it? I don't know. It's going to be some. We could definitely build on FreeCAD because you've got all this advanced uh, 3D and computation facility. So it does make sense in FreeCAD. But maybe like think of some custom FreeCAD release where it's like the FreeCAD open source house designer. That makes it yep. super easy. Like the user interface is much better and stuff like that. That's that's something for later. For now, we do what we can and um, go from here. Yep, that makes sense. With the ability to add modules and and remove modules from the base build, 
um, I, I think you could get something very purpose built. Oh yeah. It'd be nice to almost be able to drag and drop modules. Oh yeah. And then dive into that module if you wanted to edit that. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. you would have like instead of three X's, you have here's all your modules. You just drag and drop, and that's it. Yeah. And then even if it's just that you align them next to each other, like you you want to, yeah, that that would be pretty easy to implement. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, one other thing on this workbench, you know, it drops when you make these, when you, when you make one of these, it just puts it at the origin. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've had some trouble, yeah, I think, in the drafting box, toolbox, you have to, I don't think you can, at least in my experience, which is limited, I don't think you can select all of these and then do a move command and then, and then move it all. Yeah, I think you can just do, like, one at a time. Yeah. And you know what I think does work? I think if you make it a compound, you can move it all. But yeah, there's details, but yeah, you can definitely do it. If you make that into a compound in a part workbench, you can all move it at the, at the same time. Is there a way to back out of a compound then? Yeah, yeah, there will be. Oh, okay. There is. Okay. Like it'll spit, if you try to delete the compound, it'll spit out all its parts. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, once it catches up. Yeah, now you can move the whole it's thing. But, but just, you know, just uh, conceptually speaking, like how Jeff had his three X's and they each dump a module into the viewing window. Well, you take what he has as his script, you edit that and just m do like move. So for example, you could have, instead of those three X's, you can literally have like right now, uh, like one of us probably could do that without a problem, like one through 48. And you click on each one and e inside each of them, it already has the translation operation and all that. So mm -hmm. you're, you're literally putting these things into a new arrangement. But what's the use of that? If you already know those modules, well, yeah. Uh, you have to be able to manipulate them otherwise somehow like okay make like a three-story thing make like a longer Version or whatever so yeah um, Think about what's what's the most useful interface to do this, but yeah to dump all the different modules and then Move them around to make any configuration Yep yep. So yeah, not too far on this, but I, I know what I need to do. I just need to find the the right functions to manipulate the file, yeah. to manipulate the objects within the file. Yeah. And have you ever been exposed to the spreadsheet workbench in FreeCAD? I, yeah, I pulled it up just to, just to see what it was about, but it seemed like it was a lot of the same. You would still need to know a lot of the same commands. And so I just thought I'd focus right. on the script. If I can get a working script, then maybe I can explore that. Yeah. Because in, um, in a spreadsheet, you you can define, like, you can basically create a spreadsheet and you put in the parameters and it'll draw that object for you. So if that spreadsheet already has, it's already pre-populated with all the components, you can be, like, manually changing their dimensions. And that, that would be pretty pretty interesting, pretty useful for make va making variations. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Okay. So, right. I don't know. What else? What else do we want to cover? Uh, I'm going out there to build some walls. The idea is still, uh, I hope to next week uh, report with, here's the plumbing. I did that in a day. Here's electrical. I did that in a day. Let's see if we can do it. Um, I've got questions about uh, recruiting, but yeah. Um, yeah. If you if you just want to stick around after, I'm not sure if that's interesting. Yeah, to yeah. Learn. Yeah. So if anyone feel free to leave. We'll, we'll leave it at here unless there's any other questions. And yeah, John, go ahead. Still recording. So. Yeah. So like, take care. Um, my assumption is that we want at the at the bare minimum we want the land and the building like the permit or the building package approved yeah. before we start. Advertising the opportunity, the employment opportunity. Yeah. Um, month, yeah. I just wanted to double check with you that that was like in line with your vision. Yeah, yeah, that is like we probably want to. Uh, I would say when we have 
I would even go with like as soon as after I have done this house to the point where it's at the stage that we're gonna build it. So that'll be a little bit okay. more time. But right after that, the only thing that's that's bothering me like right now that one day thing is a concept. It's not a reality. So that takes down my confidence to say that oh yeah I've done it already but after I will have done it I will be able to confidently say yeah let's hire people at X dollars per hour and we, we can set different rates but we have a pretty firm idea that's that's how fast it's gonna go for the structure as I said man I know we can just nail that and I, I need that in my in my own hands and my own experience the same experience on the other systems at which point it's all out on instructionals and getting people Making sure people show up. Okay. Cool. That was it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's it. So let's. Yeah. Anything else? Or yeah, that'd be great <laughs> on the uh, emerging ventures. And actually, we're also uh, talking to Nova Foundation, right? Yeah. So I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna re-engage with Matt Reisinger and see if he's still gonna meet us on Tuesday. Yeah. Um. So expect some change on that, but um. Have you, has anybody ever told you you look like Justin Hawkins? Justin Hawkins? No, I, I was... He, if you had piercings and tattoos, you, you'd look like the lead singer of The Darkness. Oh, okay, The Darkness. Huh? I was told Morrison from The Doors. Doors? Um, Is it? Yeah, yeah, Jim Morrison. Yeah. Because with my but, longer hair, and it's all... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, that's I just want to end up behind that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, well, good luck. Stay hydrated. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> will do. Um,